Hi. In this lesson, I want us to talk about how we can uh, potentially stabilize slopes to prevent the type of disruption we can see that mass movements can cause. Now, there's a variety of techniques that can be applied. Obviously, these techniques all depend on the uh, specific nature of the geology. I mean, to be honest, this is a good thing. If there was just one answer and one solution uh, to an unstable slope, then you wouldn't need to uh, employ a, an expensive engineering geologist to come along and come up with the solution for you. Anyway, let's go. There are six basic ways that uh, we use to stabilize slopes. Six sort of approaches we can take to this. The first is to decrease the head weight. What that means is taking away material, uh, loose material, that may fail. Um, now, often this isn't a, a, a strategy that can easily be employed. You know, there's a reason that uh, slope is there in the first place. Um, removing lots of material could well be difficult, almost certainly is going to be expensive, and will consume a, a, a lot of land. So rather than decreasing the head weight, another way to approach it is to increase the toe weight. So this is the, the force at the bottom of the slope that holds the rest of the slope back. Uh, a wall, for example, would increase toe weight. In line with decreasing the head weight, you could also decrease the slope angle. Uh, it's the same type of idea as decreasing the head weight with the same type of issues. As always, water. You must, must consider water. Decreasing the, the pore water pressure will increase the friction that's keeping the slope uh, in place. You could pin the slope in place, you could fix it, stop it moving, or finally, stabilize it perhaps with vegetation. Now, Clearly, not all of these are all going to work in all circumstances. Let's look at some of these different approaches. We could use uh, a set of what we call soft engineering methods. These uh, use natural materials, uh, tend to be fairly small scale, um, not terribly expensive, but you can't use them everywhere. Uh, the environmental impact of these tends to be fairly low as well. That contrasts with hard engineering, building things, using concrete, um, modifying the natural environment in a big way. Uh, these tend to be expensive, but they're also perhaps more robust. They certainly don't blend in. Let's look at some examples of these. These are gabions. Gabions are wire baskets filled with rock. Uh, we use these here in school. Uh, there's a very steep slope uh, down by um, the ground floor of A block. Uh, that slope is retained using gabion baskets. Uh, they're fairly cheap and cheerful. Uh, in terms of how they blend in, they're not too bad. Um, you, know, you can use local stone, for example, to fill up the wire baskets. But in terms of the, how long they last, well, that might be limited. Certainly limited to how long the, the wire that holds them together uh, will survive. These gabion baskets are increasing tow weight. They're retaining the, the slope behind them in place. Another way of fixing <coughs> the slope in place is to use shotcrete. Shotcrete is a spray on concrete. Um, you fix a, a mesh uh, to your slope uh, spray it with concrete and it creates a, an impermeable um, surface at the top, stops water getting into your slope, which can be a good thing, um, and holds things together. Now, this can be very good with a relatively loose slope, but it's not likely to hold back um, a slope where the whole of the, all the rock material is unstable and is likely to slide. Wire nets can be fixed in place. Uh, perhaps even, as in this case, in conjunction with some shotcrete, there's a bit of belt and braces approach, 
uh, to hold loose rock in place. It stops uh, bits of rock falling off. Uh, can be quite effective, but only where you have where loose rock is an issue rather than whole slopes looking uh, that will be moving. Rock bolts are a way of pinning uh, loose, large loose blocks of rock uh, in place uh, by pinning them to uh, solid um, rocks that don't move um, behind them. Uh, it works a bit the same way as, uh, as a wall plug. Uh, if you're putting a shelf up at home, you drill a hole, uh, you put a, an expanding plug into that hole, put a screw into that that makes the plug expand and grip the sides of the hole. Rock bolts work uh, in exactly the same way. They're very effective um, where you have the right geology. The retaining wall uh, again adds toe weight. This um, holds the slope back. Um, they tend to be big, tend to be strong, um, but this is you know perhaps some of the hardest of hard engineering. It is possible at times to um, reshape the slope, perhaps uh, digging benches, for example, into the, the side of a slope. That has a number of effects. It um, reduces the height of any one particular part of the slope and can act as a, a bench to catch any loose rock. This is a technique, for example, that's often used in mines or quarries. You could even build uh, a bank around the edge of the, uh, the bench to really make sure you catch any loose rock. It does involve, of course, removing of more rock material and can be expensive as a result. You know, if you take away all that rock material, where's that going to go? If loose rock is a, is a problem, uh, one way of dealing with that, particularly on the very large slopes, uh, is to build fences. Um, so you're not you're not going to stop the uh, rock from falling, but you will stop it um, reaching whatever it is you're trying to protect. Trenches are often used at the um, uh, at the base of slopes. They have a number of uh, advantages. They can uh, help drain water away from the slope, uh, and also they can be uh, somewhere where uh, any falling rock material will get caught, so in this case, before it maybe hits the road. Notice in this particular case, a number of different methods are, are actually used. Uh, Reprofiling the slope back to 45 degrees, vegetating the slope, and including a drainage channel. These techniques don't have to be used in isolation. Uh, I keep uh, going on about water and the importance of understanding the water, particularly water pressures within a slope, uh, if we're going to be able to predict it, um, what it's going to do. Drains can help take water out of a slope, reduce that poor water pressure, uh, and make the slopes more stable. Sometimes you will see um, actually steel straps used to uh, perhaps fix a particular weakness within a rock. Um, you know, to keep again, it's, it's about pinning the, uh, the slope in place. This particular example you can see has even got some rock bolts scattered around it. Uh, we've got a very steep um, rock face here. Uh, clearly, some fairly large blocks of rock there that may be loose, and they've all been pinned in place. It's more solid uh, rock behind. We can use some soft engineering, revegetating slopes, particularly where we have unconsolidated uh, material soils, for example, uh, in a slope. Um, by planting there, the roots will bind uh, the slope together and prevent uh, mass movement. However, if you think on the link road that goes down to Cardiff Bay, uh, there are some slopes there that have been uh, dug back to a more stable angle. Um, there was attempts made to revegetate those, 
they haven't worked and you can see uh, gullies uh, being eroded in those um, because we don't have the roots to, to bind together that material. Part of this might be using uh, what we call geotextiles. Uh, these are um, material that's spread over the surface uh, of a slope, uh, which can be used to help slow, hold the ground together uh, and allow the plants to, to take root. So, providing a security uh, for slopes, uh, making sure they're uh, stable and in place is really important. What I've shown you here briefly is a menu of different options. What we need to do as geologists is we need to consider which uh, of these different techniques, or perhaps more accurately, which combination of these techniques is going to be most suitable for the particular geological circumstances that we're trying to deal with. There isn't no, any one-size-fits-all solution, nor can we just apply everything to it, because some of these methods will be ineffective. I mean, for example, we can't use rock bolts where we've got clay. Uh, it'd be like trying to nail jelly to a wall. So we've got to pick the best combination of solutions uh, to stabilize the slope we have within the budget we'll have to be able to reduce the risk that's posed. Now we do need to look at uh, perhaps a real world example of this, but that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.